in conspectu angelorum psalam tibi, in the presence of the angels, I will sing psalms to you. Carved on our choir stores were angels' wings in France. A quatre. And there the vocal cords were consecrated unto praise, not used for anything else but the divine. The mode, therefore, was entirely gratis gratuitous, just praise on behalf of the whole of creation. The Lord has a right over an earthly court as well as an heavenly court. The king has his rights, and we need not question the king as regards those rights, because they, they include precisely the right to call out of humanity some who have no other role but to be just praise of his divine majesty. And therefore one can't justify the contemplative life one cannot either justify the creation of angels, or bother to create angels. We have no need to know. He wanted, however, these new beings, dreamt by him into being, to exist to share his glory. The good is diffuse of itself, bonum is diffusum sui, and so he could not but wish to extend his bliss and ecstasy to undreamt beings, but he did not wish even their robots and automata, and therefore before the fullness of beatific vision and ecstasy a test was theirs also, and we know what happened. Non serviam, I will not serve. At that point St. Martin was given greater power. But this number we do not know how many angels there are. It's something approaching infinity, probably. We have no idea because of the generosity of our Creator. And therefore, in that context, we're not surprised that He has the generosity to give us a help, an individual help, of whom we think little if we're honest. And yet, our most close companion all along this road of life is our angel guardian, right next to us and protecting us. And is it not true that we have experience of that? How many accidents, how many things that could have been really dangerous and we forget to say thank you for that miraculous intervention. Just perhaps an accident again that we were not damaged mortally. And yet, and yet, we have by now, more or not, fewer means of knowing something about this angelic intervention in accidents. It's through what has been caught now, more and more, on the screen. Why? Because only now do we have all corners of life in civilised society recorded on closed circuit television. And so, in a way, it's not surprising that occasionally the camera picks up actually which is there, the objective reality of a presence. This, then, is interesting, for not a few miraculous interventions can be seen on YouTube with regard to angels directly intervening, protecting people from definite inevitable death. Therefore we're precious. Therefore they're really there. And therefore they also have power over the physical. They can intervene. Just as wandering spirits, perhaps wanting prayer, can intervene to move objects. So angels can indeed, as the fallen angels can, intervene on the physical. It's a real world, and some saints and mystics have had an eye open on it. Indeed, by chance, 
I happen to know the name of my guardian angel as does a friend of mine, hers. Through privileged souls, they have a name, our guardian angels. They are for their true friends, persons as it were, close to us, but of a different species and order. Superior, yes, because angelic and uncontaminated, closer to heaven, closer to glory, and yet, in some ways, not our equal, for they can no longer, for instance, suffer. They can no, in any way, they can never consecrate or absolve sins. And so, the angels are close to the priesthood and to the Blessed Sacrament. And what is their hurt when they see us badly invade and crash into the Divine Majesty, which they see head on and with eyes open? We need their vision. How unworthy of the presence is a lightness, a casualness, a joviality which is out of place, sermons which cause laughter, loud laughter, without necessity. It is true that the Lord made use of irony when preaching, but that's different. There was a point to it, and he got the point across. But just lightness for its sake is out of place, as is too much of the horizontal when we're in the vertical. The angels teach us by their attitude how to worship. Nosewood bound is their mode. We need to recuperate the awareness of what we're at. In a quiet celebration, Especially sometimes, actually, in Latin, one is aware of being outside, anything human and anything temporal. One is jumping the centuries and hearing all the celebrations of the past. I remember in Rome, serving day after day, the Latin Mass of a newly ordained friend of mine from St. Michael's Abbey, Orange County, California. I was very much aware of the otherness of those sacred moments on a quiet altar apart. And I paused one day and caught the grace in the air with these words, lest we forget what we're at when drawing close unto majesty. How can one say that the private mass is ever private? The whole cosmos is with us, and indeed on our shoulders. Latin Mars. Day after day we mutter quietly, alone and in a corner, with no eye but thine eternal vision silently beholding this, our magic. Yet, too nigh is mystery to history's domain to be too quickly pruned. There is a peace in lingering in an age that did much gain in losing all in wonder where words cease. I have observed, my Lord, in serving thee, here where thou art, unhurried and alone, that there are many things that I can see when looking well into the great unknown. For there is here a something happening that bids me to a fading Aeon, cling.